Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. The Kirin chip is a processor developed by Huawei. After more than 10 years of independent research and development, Huawei has launched dozens of Kirin chip products. However, due to the restrictions of US chip regulations, the Kirin chip designed by Huawei Hisilicon cannot be put into production, which directly affects Huawei's consumer business. However, there is news from the Kirin chip that the Kirin A2 chip, which has been developed for four years, is already capable of mass production and may be the first to return in the field of wearable devices. This shows that Huawei has not given up. In order to develop self-developed chip business, Huawei established the Hisilicon Semiconductor Department as early as 2004, and since then launched a series of chip products, including Kirin, Baolong, Honghu, Kuenpeng, Xingting, etc. These chips correspond to different applications. Scenes For consumers, the most familiar thing is Kirin chips, because Kirin chips are widely used in Huawei mobile phones, tablets, smart wearables and other products. The Kirin chip adopts the ARM architecture and has achieved the characteristics of high performance and low power consumption through independent design and optimization. Compared with other mobile phone chips, Kirin chips have higher computing speed and longer battery life. In terms of AI, the Kirin chip also uses Huawei's self-developed neural network processor, NPU, which enables it to have faster speed and higher efficiency in processing artificial intelligence tasks. At the same time, the Kirin chip also has a corresponding security mechanism to ensure the user's information security and privacy security. Kirin chips have brought Huawei strong competitiveness in the field of smartphones, but the US chip rules have prevented Kirin chips from being put into normal production. Since September 15, 2020, all Huawei Kirin chips have consumed inventory and no new products have appeared. If you want to continue to mass-produce Kirin chips, there are only two possibilities. One is that the United States relaxes the restrictions on chip rules and allows Huawei's Kirin chips to be put into production again. The other is that Huawei and its industrial chain get rid of the dependence on American technology and realize independent production. At present, Huawei seems to have broken the ice in the second way. According to online news, the Kirin A2 chip is already capable of mass production and may be the first to return in the field of wearable devices. If the news is true, then this will be the first step of Kirin's rebirth. I am afraid that many people are unfamiliar with the Kirin A2 chip. In fact, Huawei launched the Kirin A1 chip product in 2019. The Kirin A2 chip is an iterative product and is positioned as a wearable device chip. So the Kirin A2 is not used in smartphones. Since wearable device chips do not have high process requirements, domestic manufacturers can mass-produce them, which explains why Kirin A2 can return. The news on the internet also mentioned that this Kirin A2 will be launched in the third or fourth quarter of this year, but the specific product specifications and production plan still need to see the official arrangement. Huawei has been sharpening its sword for four years, and there is news about the Kirin chip. Although it is not expected to be used in smartphones, as long as the Kirin chip can continue to be mass-produced and released, it is a good thing.
It can be seen that Huawei has not given up, even if it is restricted in mass production, even if it continues to consume chip inventory, Huawei is still persisting. This persistence is not as easy as imagined. Huawei needs to invest a huge amount of research and development expenses every year to support High Silicon's 7,000-person team and to deal with external pressure. Another self-developed chip, OPPO, has given up news and disbanded its Seiku chip research and development team. This is inevitably regrettable, and I also know that self-developed chips are not that simple. This is a very complex and difficult task that requires a lot of manpower, material and financial resources. There are many problems that need to be solved in the research and development process of self-developed chips. It is necessary to design the chip's architecture, circuits, logic, etc. to ensure excellent chip performance and power consumption. Strict testing and verification of the chip must also be carried out to ensure that the function and performance of the chip meet the design requirements and meet market demand. In addition, it is also necessary to develop corresponding software for the chip, such as operating systems, drivers, compilers, etc., and provide related development tools and technical support for the chip. Originally, Huawei's EDA industrial software was imported from abroad, but after being restricted by the United States, Huawei chose to self-develop and cooperate with manufacturers to conquer 14 nanometers EDA industrial software. Of course, once the self-developed chip is successful, the benefits are also very large. It can better control the performance and functions of the chip, avoid the restrictions and influence of third-party chip suppliers, and improve product competitiveness and market share. In the face of US sanctions, Huawei must increase its independent research and development of chips. Even if it is currently unable to put most of its self-developed chips into production, it can still prepare for the future. Once the country achieves a breakthrough in the industrial chain, Huawei will be able to keep up with the pace of the market as quickly as possible and launch chips that are benchmarked against international mainstream products. Kirin A2 may be the first step in the return of Huawei's Kirin chip, and there may be a second and third step in the future, until the real dawn is ushered in. If you agree, please like it, welcome to Forward, leave a message and share.